Here's one more flux problem. We've got a vector field f, xi plus yj plus 5k, or we could write that as x comma y comma 5, uses a little bit less ink. And s is the boundary of a certain three-dimensional region, a, cer a certain blob. And it's everything that's e, the actual region, is the inside of the cylinder x squared plus d squared equals less than or equal to 1. So let's draw that, and then some other conditions we'll draw at the same time. So that is a cylinder with axis being the y-axis and radius 1. And then y is greater than or equal to 0. OK, so one of the boundaries of this is just going to be the xz plane. So that's so we're going to have a circle in the xz plane, the unit circle in the xz plane, and y it's on the right-hand side of the, of the picture. And then x plus y is less than or equal to 2. Well, that doesn't involve z, so that's a plane that's that's straight up and down. Remember, I don't think you're going to make this mistake at this point, but x plus y equals 2 is a plane, not a line, because z can be anything. So that's a vertical plane that intersects the uh, the xy plane in a dotted, like this dotted line here, where that's 2 and that's 2. So what that what's that going to do is it's going to take my, my cylinder, which extends infinitely to the right, and it's going to cut it off in an ellipse, a tilted ellipse. Okay, and so here's the the walls of that cylinder. Then there's a flat uh, circle, circular region, a, a circular disk there, and there's this elliptical disk that's that's top the top of it. So it's kind of like it's a cylinder with a, sh a cut off at an angle over here. So the boundary of that. That's complicated enough to think about. The boundary of that is three separate pieces. So boundary of E is going to be that left disk and the cylinder, cylindrical wall. But of course, it's got a kind of a weird place to stop. Plus the right elliptical. That says elliptical region. OK. So we've got to, if we're going to take the flux of this through that surface, it's really going to be all three of those. Now we're going to see that the divergence theorem gives us a much easier way to do this, but we don't have that yet, and it's good to see how to do it um, explicitly. First, though, we want to make sure we're being smart about things. We want to get a sense of what that vector field is doing, and some of these things might be special case kind of in integrals. xi plus yj, let's think about what that does. That doesn't go in the z direction. And it doesn't have these here. So it's what we've seen before is that you can promote a 2D vector field to 3D by just copying it up and down in, in, in all the planes z equals constant, all horizontal planes. And that's exactly the radial vector field in two dimensions with that done to it in the xy plane. Okay, so that means it's going to be that part of it only is going to be going outward away from the z axis, always away from the z-axis. And then uh, this guy is just going to make it tilt upward. Oh, and by the way, um, I should have said, the bound since this is the boundary of a region, then our, uh, I guess I was using green for the normal vector. We're going to use, by default, going to use the outward orientation. So um, let's see if that simplifies things at all. If I'm on this sur this disk and I'm going out away from the z-axis, that part alone is definitely going um, is just tangent to that that disk, and you can see that algebraically by saying, well, y is equal to zero there, so it's going purely in the i direction. Oh, wait a minute, we're adding some k there. Well, it's going purely in the i k directions. The normal vector there is going to be something to do with plus or minus something times j. It doesn't really matter what the heck the multiple is. Of course, if it's a unit normal, it's just plus or minus j. That dotted with something that has no j in it, because y is 0, is going to be 0. So the flux is going to be 0 on that surface. So that's good. And it's really important when you're looking at uh, a region that has multiple parts. Look at the region separately and look geometrically at how the, the vector field works and see if you can conclude that any of those things are zero or, or particularly simple to calculate. Now over here, it's going away from 
the z-axis because of this stuff and upward, and, but not in a way that seems to interact very well with this kind of slanted surface, so you're probably, we're probably just going to have to do that, um, parameterize that separately. And then um, the cylinder part, it's going um, outward, away from the z-axis, and consistently upward. It's hard to see how that's going to be particularly simple. It might all sort of cancel out in a, in a simple way, but it's it's probably not worth it trying to be too clever about it at this point. And we probably just want to parameterize it. But at least we've got only two out of the three pieces that we have to calculate. So let's let this part, the cylindrical boundary, be S1 and this be S2. And so we want to parameterize S1. OK, well, that's not too bad. It's a part of a cylinder. Um, although it is cut off in that weird, that weird way with the x plus y equals 2. Um, so we're going to want to use a, an angle coordinate that goes around and then a coordinate that goes along the cylinder. Well, this coordinate goes along the cylinder is just y. Okay, so we're going to use theta and y, but this is the theta that goes around in the xz plane. So that means x is going to be r cos theta, and z is r sine theta. That's going to be a way to parameterize a cylinder with the y-axis being the axis, and then y is just going to be itself. So it's cylindrical coordinates tilted over. We think we've used these before. OK, so um, what, is, what are the boundaries for the surface here? Well, theta is anything, OK? That is anything between 0 and 2 pi, as usual. And then the limits for y depend on theta. Because what do we know? We know that, that x plus y equals 2 is that upper boundary, or y is 2 minus x, or 2 minus r cos theta. So we're going to get an integral. When we do set it up, we're going to get an integral 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 2 minus r cos theta. Okay. And that then we're going to have a d, uh, dy d theta, but then we still need the vector field and the um, and the, the the rest of the ds part with the cross product. So let's come back to that and look at r sub y. That's pretty easy. That's dx dy 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 dz dy. Well. The only one that y comes into is y itself, and so that's 0, 1, 0. That's reflecting the fact that these straight lines are part of our grid system. They're always just pointing in the y direction, no matter where you are, with one, one unit vector. r sub theta dx d theta dy d theta dz d theta, that's very much like the usual polar story. That's going to be minus r sine theta, 0, r cosine theta. And um, so the cross product, that's going to be pretty simple. 0, 1, 0, minus r sine theta, 0, r cos theta equals, OK, so for i, we just get r cos theta. And for j, we don't get anything. And that makes sense, because the, the normal vector of these guys, these green arrows, they shouldn't be pointing in the, in the j direction. So that's a good check. Plus 0 j. And then k, we're going to get um, plus r sine theta k. OK, so again, that's just xi plus zk. That makes sense. We really could have almost predicted that. That would be the radial vector field in the xz plane, something that always goes out in the xz plane um, because it's got xi and zk. And that's what, what the green arrows look like. Okay. So, But remember, you can't just say, oh, I know the direction, and I'm going to nail it down. You, this includes the magnitude factor as well. Um, and so you really want to do this out. If you have to parameterize it at all, you have to do it carefully. So I'll uh, stop right here and finish it up in the next video.